Okay, this one's a little bit of an interesting one. We have a 3D One Piece movie. And there is an asterisk on like everything that I said here because it's not really a movie, it's 30 minutes. And while I don't know the history, it feels like it is a movie that is conceived out of a bunch of coincidences. That is to say that I think it's weird. And when I saw that there's a 3D One Piece movie, I hesitated a little bit in watching this movie because 3D and anime have a rough history together. I've seen like one or two instances where it's done right, but I've seen a lot of instances where it's like janky because it's hard, okay? Like doing this is hard, especially if we consider any like stylized animation pre Spider-Verse, pre Guilty Gear era. So when I saw this movie, my first instinct was why? Not that I mind One Piece jumping into another medium. I think that if any story was to jump into another medium, I think One Piece is one of the few pieces of fiction that is capable of jumping to different mediums. It is wacky and weird and charming. And the Grand Line has so many varied set pieces that like, sure, you want to do a live action? Go for it. You want to do a 3D animation? Go for it. You want to try puppeteering? That'd be cool. Especially because this is not canon stuff. Once you get to that, it's like, do anything. I don't care. This is like DLC for me. My only rules for One Piece movies are, are they interesting? Will they have interesting characters? Will it be fun? Now, personally, this is just my head canon, but I feel like this movie was designed more as like a tech demo, if you will. Like if a studio got their hands on 3D animation software or wanted to dive into that and was like, we should try to make something out of this. That's what I feel like this movie was designed for. As someone who has frequently and constantly changed mediums on this platform for the sole purpose of like having fun in experimentation, I understand it. So let's start off quickly by explaining the plot and the characters. Something that will not take long because the story doesn't really exist. While there is a small section of the story dedicated to this side character and their pet, we're not really choosing to dive into that and take it really seriously because, um, we don't have the time for that. We got 30 minutes to make a premise, conflict, and resolution. So I think the story very wisely chooses to make it all into a joke. The man thinks he's dying. Is he really dying? No, he just ate spaghetti weird and like ate the fork. Oh, this dog is acting up because he's going to be abandoned. Oh no, he's doing weird things like stealing a straw hat. I'm going to say this in the best way possible, okay? It feels like filler. In fact, I'm kind of surprised, given how much of the time they're at sea or anywhere in the Grand Line, I'm surprised we haven't seen more stories where Luffy loses his hat. And so we have this dog bird creature that steals Luffy's hat and tries to run away with it. And Luffy tries to catch it and then shenanigans occur. That's really all this movie comes down to. Like, there's not much more, and I love it for that. Because while the premise is very simple, Straw Hat gone, where is it? That is a very simple concept, and yet, if we are attempting to make 3D animation for the sole purpose of, like, a glorified tech demo, this is a gold mine. You have them running around in land, in sea, under a cliff, in a cave, through pillars, we see Luffy uh, using his rubber abilities to like swing from pillar to pillar, showcasing a lot of dynamic movement that is very difficult to do in 2D. And if there is any way to describe this movie, it's fun spectacle. It's fun spectacle to like the highest degree. I feel like at some point we're experimenting, like how are we gonna do water? How are we gonna showcase the like sword slashes? How are we gonna do weird moves like Gear 3? And it's one of the movies where like, if you think about it, Stuff starts to like fall apart lore wise. We see Zoro uh, breaking sea stone extremely easily and it's like, ah, but like, shush, don't think about it. That's not what this movie is for. If you're using your brain, turn it off. This movie is designed to be very silly. And I wish like the only thing I would change from this movie, if I'm being honest, is like, I wish the first like minute or two where we introduced the side characters, I just cut that out. Just cut that part out. Cause I was like, oh no, is this going to try to be like a serious movie? Is this going to try? to be serious and I'm so glad that it wasn't but that like worried me I'm like oh am I gonna hate this movie is it gonna be slow the rest of the movie is so different from that also uh the side character doesn't help because I think the side character is like the worst animated character there this is a pretty hard thing to do in general because I feel like the one piece characters are always the best characters in these movies and all of the side characters never look as good as the main characters like, they feel like side characters, they don't feel as polished. 
But especially in this movie, I was like, man, is this how the characters are going to look? This is a little rough. And then we get to see the Straw Hats, and it's fine. They feel like video game cutscenes. And, well, it's like 2010 movie. It's fine. We really tried to make our main characters come to life. They're very expressive. They're running around. We're exploring the Thousand Sunny. And I, and I think the fact that we're exploring the Thousand Sunny and showing different aspects of the Thousand Sunny for like a second, which like this is a lot of work for one second, is what makes me think this was like a glorified tech demo, especially when we see the Thousand Sunny do a lot of intricate things that uh, we hardly even see it do in the main story. Anyways, just uh, just turn your brain off on this one. And if your brain doesn't turn off, then like you're not uh, hitting yourself hard enough. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, that's it. We're done here.